I'm gonna show you how to build some external storage that's actually faster than the built-in storage on the M2 Mac Mini. Let me show you how. Welcome back to the channel. We all know the cost of storage on Apple devices, whether it's an M2 Mac Mini or a MacBook or anything like that. We don't wanna get robbed by Apple, is that correct? I think we all agree with that for sure. Anyways, you know, adding, I think going from the base 256 gigabytes all the way up to 512 is an extra 200 bucks. Going up to, I believe one terabyte is 400 bucks. Going up to two terabytes is $800. That's actually more than buying a M2 Mac mini by itself, the base model, and a lot more actually. So why would you do that when you can build external storage like this? So I wanted to go ahead and show people how to do this and how fast this thing is. This thing's blazing fast. What are the parts you should use and why you should do this? So sit back and relax and we're gonna go through exactly how to build your own storage that's faster than the built-in M2 Mac Mini storage for a lot cheaper. Let's get into it. All right, let's cover a couple things. So the base model M2 Mac Mini, I believe the storage on there, if you get the 256 gigabytes, is only about 1,700 megabytes per second. If you get the 512, that jumps up to about 2,700 megabytes per second. Well, what I'm gonna set out in this video is I'm gonna try to make something that's close, closer to 3,000 megabytes per second. And it's gonna be a lot cheaper to add additional storage this way than just adding it to the internal M2 Mac Mini. So can we do it and can we set out to do it? So that's what we're gonna find out. Now, if you watched my channel before, you know I did a video on this hub. This is for the M2 Mac Mini as well. The problem with this one here is it's basically only gonna be 10 gigabits per second. There's actually storage on the bottom of it, and I'll show you a close-up of that. And you can go ahead and add an SSD in this, and this is a great hub for ad additional storage for an M2 Mac Mini. The problem is this is 10 gigabit per second as far as the connection, so the speed here is only gonna be about 800 megabytes per second, give or take, so that's actually a lot less than the 1700 that comes with the base model. Then I did another video over here. This is a Satachi hub. It sits on kind of top or bottom of, of the actual Mac mini. And this one over here, the problem with this one, this one's kind of outdated. This one was only five gigabits per second connection and you could only get about 500 megabytes per second and actually probably less than that, 400 megabytes per second because it was a SATA M.2 drive that can go in this one. So that one didn't work that well either if you want really fast storage. All right, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to build this one here exactly with the enclosure and the SSD that I use with close-ups. And then I'm gonna do a test on Blackmagic to show you how fast this is, stay tuned for that. And then I'm gonna show you how fast it is to move a couple files, then eight, the eight gig file, I think, and then a 20 gig file, and see how fast that is on a drive like this, and you'll be shocked, just trust me, you're gonna be shocked at that. All right, so let's talk about the enclosure first, and then I'm gonna tell you the drive I use and why I use that. So the case is basically, and I'll put it down here because I'm not sure I'm saying it correctly, it's the Acasis, it's the TBU405, that's the case that I used. It's a full aluminum solid construction. It's about $139.99, so it's 140 bucks, you know, and, and I'll tell you why in a second. It claims that it's 40 gigabits per second as far as the speeds, way better than the 10 gigabit per second on most of these things, and that's one of the reasons you're paying more, for sure. Now on the back of it, it has four screws. You simply unscrew that up, and you put your SSD in dri drive in here, and then you basically, it came with some heat tape, but I read that it was maybe too thin, so I bought a one millimeter tape. You can see the blue one there. I put that on first, then it was still not touching the back plate with the tape, so I put on the white tape, and now it does, so it seems like it's basically cooling this okay. These are gonna get warm to the touch no matter what. They're gonna get slightly maybe even hot to warm because you're using a Gen 4 or Gen 3 M.2 NVMe drive. Those always get hot. As long as the tape is touching the back, I think you'll be fine though but you can experiment how you want it to cool this. So that's not what this is all about. But overall, this is a great device. Again, it takes Gen 4 or Gen 3 drives, and, uh, but there's specific drives that this thing needs to take to get the speeds we're gonna talk about and what those speeds are. So let me explain the drive now and why I chose it and what's the cheapest option you can get to get those speeds. All right, so this is the drive I use, and I'll get into that in a second, but what, what this company, they recommended on their website was basically the Samsung 980 Pro, all right? Well, you know, it can be one terabyte, two terabytes, and that's actually gonna be, I think, about 140 bucks, so it's steep, but, you know, that drive's pretty expensive. And then there's also, they said Western Digital work really well, and they said the SN850 or the SN850X, and again, that drive's about 110 bucks, 109 bucks, so that's expensive. So I went online and I started researching this. What are people, what have they used with this enclosure and what speeds have they gotten? And the drive that I found works the best is right here. This is basically gonna be the Western Digital Black. It's called the SN770, and it claims it's up to 5150 as far as megabytes per second. I'll show you close-ups of the drive here and the box and everything. So I picked this one up. Now, why did I pick this up? Instead of spending the 130 bucks on a terabyte for the pro version of the Samsung drive or the other one that was 110 bucks, 
Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, I actually picked this up. Let me show you right here on my screen. I got this for 59 bucks. So you can look on my screen right here. You can see $59, it's on sale right now. It's actually 54% off. So I'm not sure it's gonna last like that. So you may have to come back and, and try to find it for that cost later. But anyways, so that's the drive I picked because I found out that this drive is very successful at getting those speeds and you're paying a lot less there. Obviously paying 59 bucks versus paying 130 or 110 bucks, you save a lot of money. All right, let's look at my screen over here. We're gonna do this black magic test. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and just make sure I select the correct drive. So I'm gonna select target drive. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click on the Western Digital Black right here. You can see it, click on that. Gonna go ahead and open that up. So now we're actually on the Western Digital Black, the one I just installed, the external enclosure. And we're gonna go ahead and run this test and let's just see how fast this is. As you can see, it's 2,745 on the writes, 2,740 on the reads. Again, it's running a second time. Look at these speeds, they're pretty incredible. That one's a little bit slower, but still ultra fast. So at the end of the day, we're talking 2,750 megabytes per second, all right? So what I did for full disclosure is I formatted this as APFS for a Mac, but if you want it to work on a Mac and a PC, you can just do XFAT, you know, go ahead and format it as XFAT and it should work. It should be about the same speed. I haven't tested it, but I saw some examples online. Um, and so you can see 2,750 megabytes per second. Now, again, the base model M2 right here is basically gonna have about 1,700 megabytes per second. So that's 1,000 megabytes per second faster. And even the 512 gigabyte version is only gonna be like 2,700, somewhere in that range. So this is probably actually even faster than that second version up. So this is gonna be capable of doing anything like video producing or anything like that if you wanna do it off the drive. It's actually really good at that. And so you can't go wrong with something like this because it's just so ultra fast and it doesn't get incredibly hot as long as you have it touching the back plate. All right, for the second test, I wanna show you something. Go ahead and look at my screen here. So here's four files. They're basically about a gigabyte total in size. I'm just gonna show you how fast they can move over. So watch this, I'm gonna put this in here. Now you don't even tell that they moved over and they're already moved over. So that takes literally one second, right? It's, it's done, that's nothing. So let's go ahead and do some bigger files. All right, so this bottom file right here, this is eight gigabytes, eight gigabyte file. Watch how fast it does this. I'm gonna go one, two, three, I've dropped it in there. Did it even copy over? Let me open this up. There it is, 8.9, 8.19 gigabyte file, it's done. All right, now I'm gonna take both of these files right here, and that's gonna equal about 20 gigabytes of size, 20 gigabytes. How long would that take with a slow drive? I'm gonna go ahead and drop it right in here like this. Now let's let it go. There it goes, you can see it's going seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, so it takes, about five or six seconds and it's done. You can see it right there, we open it up and that's basically eight, 8.19 gigabytes and 11.8. So it's almost you know, 20, 21 gigabytes in size right there in about five or six seconds. So let's wrap this up. So why would you buy this again? The speed obviously, but number two is let's think about this for a second. 59 bucks, 60 bucks for the drive, 140 bucks, that's 200 bucks for both in for one terabyte, you spend 400 at Apple, right? You can actually pick up a two terabyte drive. It's basically the same type of drive here. It's gonna be the SN770 two terabyte for 126 bucks. And then you can add the enclosure. So you're like at 230-ish, somewhere in there, but you'd be spending 800 bucks for that. 800 versus two something. There is the main difference. So you wanna probably pick up the two terabyte drive, have that incredibly fast storage at 2,750 megabytes per second, and uh, it's golden, right? You can do all of your editing on this. If it breaks, you can replace it versus having to, you know, your computer overusing your internal drive that's basically soldered on. These are the advantages of doing this and just kind of experiment. But I can't, like at the end of the day, I can't recommend any other drives, even though others are recommended out there. Definitely try them out. Post in the comments what you guys have tried. I know for a fact, if you try to use specific drives, a lot of drives just don't work as well and you won't get these speeds. So you definitely wanna use the one I recommended or one of the ones they recommended. And if you try something else, just don't be shocked if you're only getting like 1400 megabytes per second or something like that, because that's what a lot of the comments say is a lot of people aren't able to get these speeds unless they get this specific drive or the drives they list in there, like the 980 Pro. So at the end of the day, let's wrap this up. These are what my videos are all about, just helping people figure out how can you do things that a lot of times other big YouTubers don't talk about. And uh, hopefully you can subscribe and help me grow my channel. I wanna do this full time soon and I need your help from it. So please subscribe if you can and we'll talk to you in the near future. Peace.